Hello everybody, thank you for joining me here today. As a student of the chemical engineering discipline, I'm going to be talking to you today about how chemistry has shaped the new energy landscape in a new system that is close to being realizable and can produce real savings for small to large businesses. Let's talk about the general idea first. This idea is based around turning currently unused waste into usable energy. But what waste is thrown away right now that isn't recycled or repurposed? Well, the answer is simple. We can utilize the food that we throw out. I'm talking about more than just our table scraps that get discarded into compost. Establishments such as bakeries, restaurants, farms, grocers, and other big producers of organic waste can provide an endless source of feedstock for waste energy systems. This would free up large amounts of landfill, or at the very least, take some of the strain off them, while at the same time heating our businesses and even powering our vehicles thus putting a dent into our collective carbon footprint. Navigant Research produced a report in 2012 that analyzed the waste energy technology market and the global opportunity for growth. Its current market size of $6.2 billion is projected to grow to $29.2 billion. China is the country at the forefront, already scaling up capacity of their current plants. Even with all the concerted efforts, an astounding 70% of food waste around the world still ends up in landfills. Well, this food could be converted into biogases, which are similar to syngas, biodiesel, or ethanol. In fact, it is estimated that North America could produce 47 billion liters of ethanol, which is the equivalent amount produced by corn. Collective efforts are focused on making methane, because it has a good energy density and it can be produced by bacteria. Waste energy, sy energy systems undergo the same heating process as a pre-gas fire. However, its tank will be located outdoors so that the sun's radiant energy can cause it to heat up. The decomposition will occur naturally and increase the pressure inside the tank, intensifying the total conversion rate of the waste in the syngas. Syngas has a composition of about 30% hydrogen, 17% carbon dioxide, 45% carbon monoxide, and 2% methane, with the last six being other minor gases. Syngas itself can be burned as is for heating, but with just a few more steps, we can produce a higher concentration uh, in methane. The product can then be captured at the top of the device, and the sludge, ash, and remains can be captured through the bottom of the device. An agent made of methanogens, which possess physiological traits that allow them to convert acetate, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, formates, methanol, methylamines, and carbon monoxide in the methane. These methanogens are an archaic and anaerobic form of bacteria, meaning they are very old and are typically thriving in areas that have little to no oxygen, like wetlands and the digestive tracts of animals. The methane that it produces will be of a purity that can heat your businesses, your stovetops, or it can be even used in natural gas vehicles. Lastly, the liquid waste that is removed through the bottom of the device is rich in nitrates and can be used as a fertilizer. Farms, farmers in particular, can produce much more of this waste that can be later utilized and then they can benefit from the technology. This waste to energy technology for large to small businesses is a market that is currently untapped as chemical plants only do this on a large scale. So, what are you all waiting for? Learn more about how your local waste processing plants work and look at what they're trying to do to make a more sustainable society. Thank you for listening.